from secret Russian societies, from genocide, from terrorism. This is the Dark History. <laughs> Operation Infection. Imagine that you are a doctor in East Berlin. At the time, Berlin was divided in half, while well, West Berlin was conquered by the Western powers and East Berlin was controlled by the Soviet Union. And one day, the secret East Berlin police knock at your door. Who's that Pokemon? It's the Stasi. And they told you that they have classified documents, secret documents that they would like you to see. And you as a doctor, you're like, okay, you know, sure. And, you know, at the time it was in the middle of the HIV pandemic. And the documents that you as a doctor would see is that actually that HIV came from the USA. And, well, the, the documents would be very convincing. And there would also be, you know, a couple of truths, true events like the Tuskegee studies in the US, as well as uh, Project MK Ultra, showing all the, the bad stuff the US government has done, as well, you know, couple of pages about how the US government created HIV. I read this and it looks very real. So that's why they decided to go all over Africa and convince everyone that it came, that HIV came from the US. This was Operation Infection, officially known as Operation Dead, the propaganda campaign to make it seem that HIV came from the USA. One of the most noted posters was this poster. It says, USA, homemade evil, not imported from Africa. So yeah, even the propaganda campaigns can be done by the government. So who knows, maybe there is propaganda campaigns going on today. The Domodevo International Airport bombing. Imagine you are flying to Russia on a plane and you're there to receive an award. Then you arrive at the Domodovo Airport and as you walk, you see a man with maybe a strap. Well, we aren't sure if the person saw it. But suddenly, a huge explosion of This was a story of Anna Yablonsky. She was a Ukrainian playwright who uh, went through the Domodovo airport and was bombed by a terrorist attack. In this terrorist attack, it caused the deaths of 37 people as well as injured 173 people. It was done by Chechnyans who wanted independence and by a terrorist movement called the New Caucasus Emirate. The result, the result of this is quite interesting because many uh, drew parallels to uh, Call of Duty and the No Russian series and well, I don't think they inspired from it, but the resemblance is quite canny. The Circassian Genocide so casting genocide is maybe one of the most untalked about genocides because people haven't even heard about who are the Circassians. And Circassians actually trace back to a very, very long time. Uh, well, they had links with the ancient Greeks, uh, they were under another name, but by 1427, they had a unified empire called Circassia. <gasps> and these peoples, well, would kind of go through a tumultuous time in 1763. Well, their empire would be under a threat, under the threat of Russian expansion. And Russia wanted to annex this, this region, and of course the people refused to be annexed by Russia. The result? A century-long war. The war was brutal, people getting shot indiscriminately, uh, and by 1862, Russians started burning down villages indiscriminately even villages that were pro-Russian. And by 1863, well, the Russians shooting indiscriminately. <laughs> and one event that happened is that, uh, well, many sacrificed their own lives, charging at the Russian troops with no weapons, and they forced. And, you know, basically they had no weapons and basically were, uh, well, well, were exterminated while the others run. And in this chaos, even some were relocated, which is not a good ending either because many died of, exhaust, of exhaustion, they were left in rags in the cold, and mothers were holding their dead babies. By 1864, we estimate that three-fourths of the Circassians peoples were exterminated. The Budion's Hospital Crisis. Let's center towards one man, Samil Basayev. 
He was a Chechnyan and he wanted independence from the Russians. Now, why do the Chechnyans want independence? Well, just like Circassia, the Chechnyans were independent before the Russians conquered them. And now, they want independence. And after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, well, he began an anti-Russian campaign. And only three years later was the war between the Russians and the Chechnyans who wanted independence. Alex, давай, может быть, как-нибудь, пока не поздно, отведите ребят, Алек, не делайте это, не делайте, не надо. Вы в любом случае, Алек, And what happened was that in 1995, which is one year during the war, 11 of his family members were killed by the Russians. He wanted revenge. He and 130 fighters went to the city of Budyonsk in Russian-controlled territory, and with all these weapons, they entered the city and captured people indiscriminately. And they also shot 100 civilians who refused to cooperate. In total, they might have captured 1,500 to 1,800 civilians, or even less, according to some estimates. And with the Russians pushing towards the Chechens, well, they had to put all the hostages in one place. And that place was the hospital. In the hospital, they asked that journalists come. And when they were late, well, they executed five hostages. Soon after, there would be a Russian response. The Alpha Commando Unit, along with the Spetnaz, were on the scene to intervene and rescue the hostages. But it did not go as planned, and the result was brutal. Many, many, many hostages were killed during these attacks, these multiple attacks by special forces. And the Russians accused the Chechnyans of using the hostages as human shields. And, well, the result was a bloody scene. A testimony by Sergei says that the hospital was burning and human flesh was sticking on the walls and the ceiling. In the end, a ceasefire was negotiated. The Chechens would be allowed to go home and there would be a ceasefire. But in reality, the war would not stop. A second war would begin in 1999 and would last until 2000 under Boris Yeltsin and Vladimir Putin. In these events, refugee buses would be bombed, people killed, civilians bombed, and cluster bombs thrown. The Petrashevsky Circle, or the secret Russian society. Imagine you're a scholar in Russia, and it's the 1840s. And one day your friend, he's called Mikhail Petrashevsky, and he says that, you know, he has a couple of forbidden books. Uh, forbidden books. And, you know, as a curious man, you know, if anyone told you, you know, that, you know, they have forbidden books, you know, you always, you know, I think most of us would, you know, want to see what are these forbidden books about. Uh, so, so you agree, and you have just joined a thing called the Petrashevsky Circle, a semi-secret literature and philosophy group. Now, nah, this is pretty innocent, but things ramp up from here. Well, at first, people discussing within the circle were talking about things that are quite innocent, you know, with philosophy and you know, ideas that you know nature and mankind were in two separate realities, Shadow of this is pretty innocent and, you know, wouldn't be a problem. It would just be, you know, a high school, you know, philosophy club. But it gets more intense from there. Because the discussion started to get more and more political. Uh, for example, within the circle, people were discussing ideas like the abolition of serfdom, uh, and even the roles of book in society, as well as censorship, and even socialistic ideas. Now, this again, it's not, it's, it's just, it is the words, and not really a threat for the government. And, you know, the Tsar, he, he didn't really know about it, but, you know, it wouldn't have been a threat to the Tsarist society. What happened next would make things a little bit more intense. So, you know, in the present, you know, you, when you form a big group of friends, you might have, you know, subgroups of, you know, I mean, like, personally, you know, I'm always part of the big group, but I'm never part of the subgroups. I'm never invited. <laughs> anyway, anyways, back to the, to the story. Well, the big group in this case would be the Petrashevsky circle, and the others would be smaller groups, 
One of these groups is called the Spechnev Secret Society. And they, they were one of these groups that would turn words into action. Uh, and this, this secret society, uh, led by, of course, uh, Spechnev, well, he would publish anti-serfdom propaganda and would distribute it, and the goal was to cause a revolution in Russia. And, well, in Russia, in 1848, all across Europe, there was, there was revolutions, and the Tsar was scared that there would be a revolution in Russia. And with the finding of a propaganda poster in 1849, all the members of the Petrosevsky circle were arrested. One of the most notable members is actually Fyodor Dotievsky. And after these people were arrested, they were put in jail for many, many months. Afterwards, a person would come and tell them that today you will be executed. They were tied to poles and uh, I believe even their graves were just in front of them. And many thought that that day would be the last day of their lives. One even went crazy from the thought that he would die that day. But afterwards, they were told that they were spared. It wouldn't be funny if I, if I said it was a prank, but it wasn't a prank. It was, you know, the consequence was actually the, the mental tarnish that it did. And actually, you know, the better sentence was that uh, they would actually just be jailed and afterwards become soldiers. Which I'm not, I'm not sure if that's, if that's a better alternative, but, you know, that, that's the tragic uh, end of the Petrushevsky circle. Sadly, it's the end of this video. Next week will be a video about the dark history of World War I. So please subscribe to keep in tune and I'll see you guys next week.